beautiful island of Bali in Indonesia. Known as the Island of the Gods, but it's not just the beautiful beaches and the clear blue waters that attracts millions of visitors each year. The island is also rich with culture and stunning scenery. But for three consecutive weeks, the world's leading badminton players have all been based here at the Bali International Convention Center for the Indonesia Badminton Festival. And we've now reached the culmination of the entire tour, the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals, where we started with just the top eight players and pairs in each of the five disciplines. We had three days of group round robin play, and it was just the top two in each group that progressed to the semi-final knockout stage. We're now down to the last two because today is finals day. And these are the magnificent trophies the players are playing for today, plus one and a half million US dollars in prize money. So as the trophies are brought into the arena, I can tell you that this is the 14th edition of the end of year championships, which date back to 2008. But it's the first time this prestigious event has been staged in Indonesia. So finals day today, as I say, and we really do have a terrific lineup. We're going to start with women's doubles and Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young, the Olympic bronze medalists in their second consecutive women's doubles final here at the World Tour Finals. They're up against the number two seeds Matsuyama and Shida going for their third title in three consecutive weeks here in Bali. Then it's mixed doubles and the two pairs in the final have between them won all six Super 500 and above tournaments in the 2021 season. It's the number one seeds Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino, the Olympic bronze medalists, up against the defending champions Puavara Nukro and Teirak Tanajai, trying to win their third title in three weeks. Then it's women's singles and Anse Young trying to become only the second women's singles player, in fact, uh, any singles player in Super Series and World Tour history to win three titles in three consecutive weeks. In her way is Pusala Venkata Sindhu, the reigning world champion and the former winner of this title. She's in her third final at the end of year championships. And then it's men's doubles and for a third time in three weeks we have the same two pairs in the men's doubles final. The world number ones, Gideon and Sukamolio are in their fifth final in their fifth tournament played and then uh, they're up against Hoki and Kobayashi the world championship silver medalist and they're in their fourth final in five tournaments played then we will finish with men's singles and Victor Axelson, the Olympic champion and two-time winner of this event he's in a record equaling fifth final at the end of year championships, he's up against the reigning and three-time world junior champion Kunlavut Witesan of Thailand. So with women's doubles being our first final of the day, a chance for us to look at the draw and I can tell you that the two pairs in the final both topped their group. Of course there were four pairs in two groups and as I was saying everybody played everybody else but it was the two top pairs in both the groups that have come through to today's final. Sadly the Stoyeva sisters weren't able to compete in the semi-final, one of them with a back injury. So the women's doubles final. The number four seeds Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young up against the number two seeds Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida of Japan. So quite clearly in this tournament the best two pairs having won all of their group matches. So as we wait for the players to come onto court, they've been announced now. I can introduce myself, Jill Clark. I'm sitting alongside former world number one, Morton Frost, and what a terrific lineup we've got. Absolutely agree with you. I'm so looking forward to it. And uh, as you just rightly introduced everyone, it's going to be a festive day. It certainly is a wonderful, wonderful lineup, and quite astonishing that uh, we've got uh, three finalists that are, are all going for a third title yes. in three weeks, or yes. have competing in three 
finals in three weeks. Uh, it's it's quite extraordinary. As we welcome the number four seeds, the beaten finalists from the last edition of the World Tour Finals. It is the Korean pair of Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young. Lost in the final in Bangkok of the 2020 edition, which was played in January earlier this year. Lost to Lee So Hee and Shin Se Young Chan in three games. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But for Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida, while making their first appearance at the end of year championships, they're through to a third final in three weeks. They're trying to make it three titles in three weeks, having won the Indonesia Masters and then last week the Indonesia Open. So this, as you can see, will be a third meeting between these two pairs. And of the previous two, well, the Koreans have won both of them. The last time they met was the semi-final of the fairly recent French Super 750. 21, 17, 21, 19 in 46 minutes. The Koreans won in Paris. And the all-important toss of the coin. We've been talking for three weeks about the drift in the arena. And the shuttle is flying faster going towards the far end of the quarters we will be looking down during the rally. So Morton, tell us who won the toss, who chose ends? Korea won the toss and they chose ends and they are serving as well as far as I could understand but the most important part is of course choosing ends. Yeah, it's become a bit of a trend with the Japanese players hasn't it to choose to receive. I've noticed that a lot with the with the Japanese players. Yep. Maybe they have some statistics or something that says that it's... If you do, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but as far as these players are concerned, well, in the background there is Kim So-young. She's the oldest player on court at the age of 29, born in Daegu, which means large hill. It's the fourth largest city in the Republic of Korea. And they're playing off their career high at the moment of number four. It's their sixth week in total at number four. And they also finished on the World Tour ranking of number four, but they only played four tournaments towards that. Kong Hee Young will turn 25 in exactly six days' time next Saturday. Uh, so she will be hoping for an early birthday present. And as far as... Their results are concerned. Well, I was telling you, they've won all of their matches. Uh, first, uh, on Wednesday, they played Tan and Muralitharan of Malaysia. Then on Thursday, they played the Olympic champions, Poli and Rahayu. That was 21-15, 21-18. That was very convincing. And in the last of the group matches, beat the number one seeds, Kiri Harakan and Projomjai, but they needed three games to do it. As I was telling you, they didn't play the semi-final because the Soyeva sisters pulled out. So to Nami Matsuyama, she's 23 years of age from Fukuoka Prefecture on the island of Kushu. Went up two places earlier this week to their career high of number seven. And her partner, Chiharu play. Shida, a year older at the age of 24 from Akita and they are trying to create a little bit of history today but as I was saying they've won all of their matches Ponopa and Reddy on Wednesday then Birch and Smith from England then the story of her sisters the number three seeds quarter final I beg your pardon the semi-final they beat the Olympic champions Polly and Rahayu actually won the match 23-21 in the deciding game, winning on their third match point opportunity. As we look at our court officials for our first final, Michael Fairidal from Norway and Roberta Tommy Oscariano from Indonesia, the service judge. So for the Korean pair, it's only their second final of the 2021 HSBC BWF World Tour. And their first was the French Open 
I lost in the final in Paris, but it's their fourth final of 2021. And on my left, Ame Matsuyama and Shiharu Shida, Japan. Kim so Young to serve to Shiharu Shida, Lawol. Play. So the number four seeds, Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young in the black kit nearest to us as we're all looking down on the court up against the number two seeds, Matsuyama and Shida. That's going right. Now, I promised to tell you a little bit more about Kim Kong's final at the last edition of the World Tour Finals, where they lost to Lee So Hee and Shin Sing Chan, because Morton and I remember the final quite clearly, uh, because Kim and Kong were again, and then had six match point opportunities in the second, before they lost it 26-24, and then were really rather badly beaten in the deciding game. But it was a thrilling match, wasn't it? We loved that final in Bangkok earlier this year. It was. It was a good match. And of course, the two Korean players also played uh, the playoff at the Olympics for yeah. the bronze medal. And then this pair here, Kim and Kong, they won that one. Oh, that's uh, bad luck. Yeah, it was a nice idea. Two, one. Young. Yeah. Three, that one. I would call lucky. Yeah. From such a far distance playing that backhand drive. That was close. Yeah. Because we so often talk about when they're getting closer to the net, there's actually not that much luck anymore. No. They're pretty good hitting the top of the tape. Challenging, first Kim challenge so of the match. No, I saw that Kim. as in. But it matters not what I think. <laughs> it matters what the instant review system adjudicates. You're, you're putting yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, you're yeah. so right. Yeah. Challenge unsuccessful. Challenge remaining. So that was a good interception from Two, Matsuyama. Three. Yeah, she played Play. outstandingly yesterday, I think, in the match against Stir, Puli and Rahayu. She was the, the better of the two Japanese players. Three, very, very decisive in almost everything she was doing and very proactive in her counter-attacking opportunities. She fell a little bit off the radar, uh, but came back into it quite strongly in the third game. Four, three. shot to try. Now Morton, before we get really embroiled into what I suspect is going to be an excellent women's doubles final, I'm going to give you my first fun fact of the day. And I can tell you that women's doubles here at the World Tour Finals has been the only discipline uh, to have all eight pairs from eight different <laughs> countries. Yes. And it is the first time ever since the inception of the Super Series and now the World Tour, that in the women's doubles discipline, we haven't had duplicate nations taking part. First time ever. Okay. Yeah, I noticed there was eight different countries playing, so uh, well, I didn't know it was the first time. Yeah. There is over. Five, four. Uh, 
that works. That's a perfect serve, isn't it? Nice. Way in, actually. Yeah. I, I find it fascinating already. Because I've seen uh, Matsuyama and Shida play on a, on a number of occasions over the last three weeks, and I have sort of praised their proactiveness and how you know aggressive they are. I think they are a little bit timid today. I think they are sort of saying, "Oh, that's a beauty." What a shot! Well spotted by Over. Matsuyama. Perfect. Five. In what way, Timid? As far as... They are not as aggressive and they're not going out firing on all eight cylinders or whatever, yeah. you know. They, yeah. they, they are sort of holding back a little bit and, and I think they are maybe a little bit concerned that they are up against, uh, what would I say, more muscles? Yeah. Uh, on the other side, that uh, they maybe think that they don't have the same kind of physical upper hand. Yeah. Over. It's it, that's that's interesting because when Eight, these two pairs five. played against each other at the French Open in the semi-final stage, you know I think that the Japanese pair have uh, must have gained confidence having won the last two tournaments in the last two weeks here mm. in Bali, and I would have thought that they would say to themselves, you know, this is it. This is it. Yeah. We're a different pair now. Yeah. We have belief. Yeah. I think they're holding back a bit. That's better. That's much, much better. Yeah, well taken. Over. Six, and this is eight. how I sort of picture how I've seen them play over the last three weeks. This is exactly it. Matsuyama at the front of the court, really intercepting well. Oh, well, she can play that again. <laughs> Kim So Young was saying that she wasn't ready. Very fortuitous for Matsuyama. Yeah, but I think she got disturbed a bit. Yeah. That's a good mid court area shot from Shida. Look at that, that's so good, isn't it? Yeah. Seven, eight. Great, great anticipation, interception, and then just taking the pace off completely. Look at that. Excellent shot. And I really, really think that Matsuyama is getting better and better. So do I. We talked about it when we first saw them in Europe. Well, what was it, three months ago? It's <laughs> <laughs> been on tour ever since. We've all been on tour ever since. <laughs> yeah. And we thought she was talented there, and poor old Chia twisted her ankle. Nine, yes. Seven. And we saw Matsuyama playing with one of the more experienced players, like uh, Matsumoto, for instance. And, and we were very impressed with her there. And I think, I really do believe she's grown in stature. I really think that she's now has the belief that she can live with the top players in the world. She is yeah. one of the top players in the world. Yeah, she is. Just have to realise herself. But uh, Kim and Kong played very solid badminton is over. Eight, in this first seven. half of the first game. Challenging. Yeah. Well, you're looking straight down that line. Yeah. To the best of my knowledge, that one is out. Which means it's 11 8 at the mid game interval. If you're correct. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, you are. 
11 8 confidence for you. <laughs> successful. One challenge remaining. So a three point so advantage to 11, eight, the Olympic interval. bronze medalists Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young. So, as we can't understand any of the coaching here, Morton, I'm going to give you another fun fact. And that's if Kim and Kong were to win today's final, they will become only the second pair to win titles at all five levels of the World Tour. So 300, 500, 750, 1000 and the World Tour finals, the five levels. 20 seconds, 20 seconds. The other pair who has done that is Chen Ching Cheng and Charlie Fan. Since 2000, oh, sorry, 2018, yes. Yes, yeah. I'm yeah. talking specifically the yeah. about the World Tour. Yes. 11, 8. Yeah, that's a good serve 12, eight. from Kim So Young. Yes, yeah, very dominant here in this opening 13, game, I think. Eight. Great shot to the mid-court area, they really set it all up. That's, oh. The Japanese really lucky to win that one, in my opinion. That was a great opportunity, yeah, look at that. Kim so young really thought she should have done better. Again, great creativeness from uh, Matsuyama at the net. Oh, she's missed that one, so won't be happy with that. 14 9. Yeah. And I think that's exactly what's making the difference in this opening Nine. game, is that Kim and Kong are really good counter-attacking. And uh, the kind of pace and power they bring into the game in that situation is really unsettling the two Japanese a little bit. And I think this was a very, very fine example of it, that flat cross-court drive. created her own, own luck there to be so young. She got the net cord, but she really made a huge effort to take it early. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. There is over M16. But this time there is not enough power. On that shot from uh, Kim So Young, and uh, look at that, she knows it. And so far, I think the Koreans have been really good passing the front player. Yeah.
very, very sharp reactions of the over. court from Kim So Young. 17-11. And on top of what I've mentioned earlier, I think they also have singled out Sheila a little bit, especially her defence. Yeah. Too much out of balance. mistake there, but 18. I mean, you're right, Morton. I know you've uh, suggested that the Japanese pair have been a little timid, but you've got to hand it to the Koreans the way they have come out in such positive fashion. Yes, couldn't agree with you more. They really deserve the, uh, the lead so far, no doubt about it. Here, once again, enough pace to yeah. pass the front player. 12. Just two points away from the opening game now. Twenty game point twelve. Eight game point opportunities. So much pressure. Really playing well, Kim and Kong. Great pressure. And well, that one's long off the back line. 14, 20. The drift coming into effect. time on their third game point game opportunity. Kim so Young Kim so -yong and Kong Hee Yong, Yong 21, take the opening game as confirmed by the umpire. 21-14 in 18 minutes. Well, they started the 2020 final in equally impressive style. Didn't win, so Matsuyama and Shida have still got hope. Nikon Kyongwon, their coach. She never stays on court. No, oh, she's off now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a quick instruction, and that's it. Oh, she's staying long. Yeah, she actually changed to mine and came back. Oh, she's gone now. Fourth women's doubles pair from uh, or during the Super Series World Tour era to reach consecutive finals, Kim and Kong, here at the end of year championships.
last player to win to reach consecutive finals. Must be China. Actually, I... Chen Chen Chen, Chai Yifan. I think it was actually uh, the Danes, Wall and Pedersen. Okay. And 13. So here we go, second game. What can the Japanese pair produce in response? They're now playing from the faster end. They'll get help from the drift with their downward shots. And that's an ominous start for the second game. First service error from Kim Soo Yong. covering that had that nope. come over the Japanese bear were in big trouble yeah look at the facial expression of Shida she knew yeah Halfway in, in the rally, but at the net, she really made a great effort to try to kill it at the net on her backhand side, and uh, not something we so often see her do. She's favouring to go more safe, but here she really went uh, and tried to, to play an aggressive shot in a very difficult situation. Yeah, I noticed in the opening game, in fact, I think I said on one of her shots, she got the neck cord but she created her own luck by yeah. trying to take it early yeah. very committed out. yeah the so, service long yeah no doubt so but we have a challenge she does not parting with the shuttle she's very confident <laughs> Certainly it's long, indeed it was. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Turns over. Three, one, play. Landed in as well. Yep. Very, very good start to the second game by Matsuyama and Shida. Mm, got herself into a real <laughs> mess there. <laughs> she did. That's, but it was due to a very good serve from Shida. Yeah means that uh, that return of serve got a little bit too loose and definitely in a bit of a pickle. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think she knew anything about that second shot she no, played. No, I don't think so either. Now there she is again, trying yeah. to take it on. Yeah. Yeah. She's very, very aggressive at the net. It's over, two, six.
Scott. That's a brilliant smash. It is. Good placement. Seven, two. Absolutely perfect. Across the body, committed to a forehand defence. So easy to see, and look at that. Again, total trouble. Yeah, but that was absolutely onto the left hip, wasn't it? We often talk about aim for the left hip when you're playing against a right-hander and cross the body, and that literally landed on the left hip. Yeah. Perfection. It's gone long. It's over. Block. She stepped into that defensive yes. shot. Good rally, good save. As long of the back line, and surely that's got to be the longest rally of the match so far. Uh, I cannot, Eight, sorry. Three. And one of the best. Yeah, I can understand that. Kong really felt she had a chance on that drive and gave it everything. This is the one. That's where she really had a good chance. But of course, that's long of the back line. But that was a good opportunity. Forty-five shots, indeed, the longest. Millimeters away from making that. interception and good change of pace uh, it's well played by Kong isn't it first the one side and the other side she's very alert at the net this is the first one then you know yeah. she's quite a lot out of balance but still getting yeah. the second one as well just turned the racket head at the last moment from the front of the court and played an outright winner. It's a beauty. Here it comes. Look at that. What a super shot from Matsuyama. Shido was going to challenge yeah. and was persuaded by her partner not to. <laughs> that's how I saw it as well, but that's yeah, clearly out. Wasted, yes. Yeah. Another one going out. Goes long. Seven, nine. Basically got her hit in a downward direction from this near side of the court. 
very difficult to control the lifts and pushes to the back. A very good comeback, isn't it? Yeah, just one point in it now. Back level. Six of the last seven points to the Korean pair. In fact, into the lead. Um, nine. Seven of the last eight points. Well, you you have to say that the Koreans have really done their homework because uh, Matsuyama and, and Shida they they like this fast and flat, and that's what we have commended them on mm. over the last three weeks. That you know they're really playing very positive badminton. But every time you look at, uh, especially Kim So Young, she is moving forward all the time and intercepting and putting pressure on that because they know that the Japanese are not lifting it. We only have seen one, and yeah. that was actually the attacking clear. Yeah. Where Kim completely got caught on that one. That's correct, in the opening game. Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it's been working beautifully for them, that tactic. Mm -hmm. See, once again, she's in there straight away. They've really been studying and done really good prepare work here for this match. So from three, eight down, eight and nine points to the 11, nine up. What do you remember in the first week we were here, we were discussing the demise of the number two seeds only one number two <laughs> seed yes. got through to pass the second round and that was the Olympic champions in the women's doubles made the quarter final before they lost Eleven, uh, nine. I've noticed that no number two seed and the Japanese no. pair are the number two seeds in this tournament, no number two <laughs> seed has ever won Play. the end of year championships in the women's doubles discipline since the inception of the Super Series and now World Tour. So you don't want to be seeded second. You that's, don't want to be seeded second. There's that's what you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> it's got no relevance whatsoever, well, but it's just no. a, an observation. <laughs> yes. It's a good ob observation, you know. Call up the tournament uh, committee and say, no, no, I don't want to be second. Let me, let me be third. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> if I can't be f number one, that's fine. But uh, take me one down, please. All goes normally according to the ranking, uh, but of course in this tournament it goes according to the ranking where how players and pairs are qualifying for this event. Yeah, it's the World Tour standings that yeah. determines the seeding for this event. Well, this is now 10 of 11 points. What on earth has happened? They look to be cruising at 8-3 up, Matsuyama and Shida. Since then, they won one more point. Well, that's a gift for them. Over. Second time. One service error apiece from the two Korean players.
what what tactically or what has changed this more than what, what I, I I think it's Kim So Young. I, I think she's playing better and better and uh, she's commanding the front of the court. But I think that Matsuyama and she did should have perhaps changed the tactic a little bit earlier, but then definitely now, and see you know whether they can play a little bit more you know towards the back of the court, and they they're getting caught like this the whole time again into the flag exchange, and the two Koreans just moving forward. Look at that. Yeah. It's and exactly the same that's happening all the time. And that's Kim So Young again. Yeah. Coming forward, making the difference. Yeah. So as soon as uh, Kim is making a move, they, they have to lift it over her and let it uh, come, come in behind and then uh, take it from there, the two Japanese. Yeah, it was positive defence from Kong. Yeah. Missed it. See, that's that's good. That's bad luck, but that's good. Uh, the concept is good. The, the idea concept, is good. Yeah, really, really good. Look at how Kim So Young again is moving forward. There she goes, and she would be caught a little bit on that one had it not been out. Yeah. But she knows that the. Two Japanese are so likely to play a downward shot, and uh, that's when she's intercepting. Yeah. 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 And it was a call from Kong to her yeah. partner to leave it. 17, 11. Yeah. Oh, this is astonishing, isn't it? What a turnaround in mo momentum. <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. What a return of serve from Matsuyama. What delightful racket skills. 12, 17. Oh, we couldn't see it there. And she sort of had her body movement going one way and she hit the shuttle the other. Absolutely tremendous. Stamp of frustration there from Matsuyama. 18, 12.
Oh, yes. Well done by Naomi Matsuyama. I have to say the other thing I've really noticed, Morton, is Kong Hee Yong. I think that she, on the mid-court area, especially the backhand side, I think she's really making an effort to take it early, which I haven't particularly noticed before. They, the, both the two Koreans, they, they liked not going cross-court, but actually go straight down yeah. the line, but into the mid-court area quite a lot and getting it early, yeah. both of the players. And that's how they, they get uh, out of trouble, I would say, and passing the front play of the two Japanese. See, once again there, playing into the mid-court area. Yeah. There is over. 19, 13. Well, I think it's just been the sheer quality from the Koreans that has produced this scoreline. I, I wouldn't say for a moment that no. the Japanese pair have been below par. I just think that the Koreans, especially from 3-8 down, have been superb. I agree. They have really, really played a very good game. Some of the best badminton I've ever seen them play in. That went through my mind. I totally agree with you. We have seen them so often, but I think this is really, really good. Match point opportunities for Kim and Kong. Oh, good commitment on the return of serve, but perhaps too little, too late. Perhaps it's a very nice word here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them, how they're hunting the shuttle, the Koreans. Positive on defence. There's no such thing as fairness. But if the Koreans are not winning this one, I don't think yeah. it's fair. <laughs> well, <laughs> that rally was so well played. It wasn't it fantastic. What a wonderful way to win the match. Beaten in the final of the 2020 edition. And now here in Bali in 2021. Kim So Young and match Kong Hee Young are Kyung the champions. And Kong Hee Young, 21-14. 21-14. Symmetry in the scoreline. 21-14, 21-14 in 44 minutes. And go and thank their coach, Lee Kyung Won. And not only is it very special to win the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals, uh, they have now completed the full set of World Tour events. Confirmation of the scoreline there. At least one title at 300 level, 500 level, 750 level, 1000 level, and now at the World Tour Finals as well. Only the second pair ever to achieve that. Following on from Chen Ching Chen and Jia Yi Fan. That really is incredibly special. Well, I have to say, Morton, it was absolutely amazing because I thought when they were 3-8 down in the second game, I thought, oh, good, we're going to have a deciding game. Hopefully we'll see a third one. Yeah, but I thought that too. Yeah. I did. And it, it looked like the two Japanese sort of got going and uh, got through the defence of uh, the two Korean players, but uh, suddenly it all turned around. Yeah.
also Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young are invited to stand behind the podium. And Matsuyama and Shida. Right. Nami Matsuyama and Chiharu Shida. Three finals in three weeks, couldn't make it three titles in three weeks, but my goodness, they've had a wonderful time in Bali. But the champions, Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young, after being beaten in the final of the 2020 edition, stand on top of the podium. medals for the Japanese players and they present their medals to each other and that under the Covid protocols is a lovely touch. I, I really do like it when the players show appreciation to the partner and present each other. Gold to Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young. Well, I think the three weeks here in Bali, I don't think we'll be forgotten in a hurry by Matsuyama and Shida. We were talking, I think it was probably on the first week about women's doubles. It's so difficult to win tournament after tournament because it's such a physically demanding discipline. So to be in three finals in three weeks, I think that is a remarkable achievement. It is. I think they have done very well and they have elevated themselves up into the very top. And uh, when you consider the state of women's doubles in Japan at the moment because of injuries, you know, it couldn't come at a better time. Yeah. So the gold uh, trophies to the champions and incidentally it's only the second time since the inception of the Super Series and now the World Tour that a Korean pair has won the women's doubles title and it happens to be a second consecutive time. Wonderful performance this week from Kim So Young and Kong Hee Young. So the presentation party take leave. The photographers will still want some more pictures of the two pairs as we look forward to our next final which is mixed doubles. It features the number one and two seeds. It's the Olympic bronze medalist Yuta Watanabe and Orisa Higashino up against the defending champions Puavara Nukro and Teirak Tanachai of Thailand.
So welcome back to finals day at the HSBC BWF World Tour Finals. These the magnificent trophies uh, that the players are battling for in today's finals. Just one final has been decided. Uh, what excellent play by the women's doubles pair of Kim and Kong. Lovely trophies. And the status and prestige of winning these World Tour Finals, absolutely huge. So after that uh, first final, we turn our attention to mixed doubles and two pairs who have, between them, won all six Super 500 and above tournaments in the 2021 season. It's the Olympic bronze medalist and number one seeds Yuta Watanabe and Arisa Higa.